find out how exactly North Korea tricked two unsuspecting women into doing their dirty work. On February 13th, 2017, an overweight man in his mid-40s was standing at the Air Asia self-check-in kiosk in the International Airport of Malaysia. The man didn't seem to notice anything weird, but all of a sudden, an Indonesian woman in ripped jeans and a sleeveless gray top suddenly walked up behind him and covered his eyes from behind. Seconds later, she wiped her hand across his mouth, said, oh, so sorry, and quickly left. Just before he could actually process what happened, a Vietnamese woman wearing a white top with the word LOL across the chest came up and smeared his face with an oily substance. She also apologized quickly and ran away. The substance smeared across his face immediately began to take effect. His muscles began to tense up and lock into full contraction. He tried to stumble toward the men's room, but he never got there. He made it as far as the customer service counter where he muttered, please help. Bad spray face, feel very bad. In seconds, he collapsed and an ambulance was called to take him to the hospital. In that ambulance, paramedics could not revive him. Who exactly was this guy and why did two different girls come up and touch him in broad daylight? His passport said that he was Kim Chol of North Korea. The name Kim Chol is like the name John Smith in the US, an extremely common name. Except this person was not just a nobody in North Korea. Kim Chol was in fact Kim Jong-nam, the oldest half-brother of North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Who exactly is Kim Jong-nam? He was the son of Kim Jong-il and the presumed successor to rule over North Korea. When Kim Jong-nam was a little boy, his dad used to sit him on his office chair and said to him, you grow up, this is where you'll sit and give orders. It could have easily been this man who was at the Malaysian airport that day who would be tyrannizing 25 million people instead of Kim Jong-un. From roughly 1994 to 2001, Kim Jong-nam was considered the next in line to his father. But the problem for him was he just wasn't deemed to be serious enough for anything. They thought that he was just too goofy. The last straw for the North Korean regime was, eh, let's call it his embarrassing little escapade in Tokyo back in 2001. He was caught by Japanese authorities attempting to visit Disneyland with a false passport. Kim Jong-nam was eventually exiled from North Korea in 2003. However, the problem for him was he couldn't keep his mouth shut. His little brother had been keeping tabs on him, especially what he was saying. It was just a matter of time before he would be put down. City Asia was a working girl who was from Indonesia. She was living and working in Kuala Lumpur as a masseuse. And this is the exact type of girl North Korean operatives were looking for. On the night of January 5th, 2017, she was working her usual hustles when a cab driver whom she had known motioned her over. Her cab driver, Connect, who went by the name of John, told her that someone was looking to recruit girls to film girls smearing lotion on people's faces. Obviously, this is something that's clearly really weird to you and us. But of course, we are talking about the strange underworld of Asia here, so it's a little strange, but not that strange. The price of 100 US dollars was a lot more than the $15 she would typically take from a session with a client at her massage job. This was a no-brainer for her. Her dream was to someday earn enough money to build a house in her village and live there with her family. Opportunities like this didn't come by every day. Just over six hours later, John picked City up in his cab and took her to a meeting at a local shopping center with a man named James. James was to City a good-looking 30-year-old Japanese man. City introduced herself as Nydia, one of her aliases, James couldn't speak her language, so they managed to talk in broken English. James explained that he was the producer of a hidden camera TV show for YouTube in China and Japan, and he was recruiting for a comedy show. He wanted her to rub a mineral oil type liquid on the face of unsuspecting people while he recorded everything with his phone. In her mind, this was all in good fun and out in the open. James also insisted that, as part of the prank, she apologized to the person who she pulled the prank on afterwards. 
And so off they went to an upscale shopping center and City did exactly what she was told. She went up to a completely random Vietnamese looking woman and rubbed the oil like substance on the lady's face. And afterwards she apologized as instructed and ran away. And she was paid a hundred bucks. This was the easiest money she's ever made. From there they went to another upscale shopping center and she was told another random person and she was paid again. James suggested that the next day they record some footage in the airport. And she happily agreed because why not? This was incredible for her because she was getting paid really good money for almost no work. The gig seemed too good to be true. City had traveled a long way to work in Kuala Lumpur. She was born in 1992 in the conservative heartland of Indonesia, the world's largest Islamic country. City grew up scouring the nearby forest for firewood, bathing in streams, and catching crickets for food. This is a world that most of us have never experienced. Her education ended after the sixth grade. Instead, she spent her days helping her dad chop ginger and turmeric. Then her dad would take the spices they extracted and sell them at the local open markets. City might never have moved if Jakarta, the nearby capital of Indonesia, hadn't been exploding into a modern city of 30 million inhabitants. Many villagers viewed city life as dangerous and filled with life that went against Muslim beliefs. But City didn't have the same views. What she wanted was a glamorous and cosmopolitan life that she saw on TV. James soon took City on a tour of luxury hotels and malls in Kuala Lumpur. Between January 5th and January 9th of 2017, she smeared the oily stuff on the faces of a lot of different people. And the best thing? Each time, she got paid. On January 21st, James took her to Cambodia for even more recordings. James even told her that she would soon be doing this gig in America. City started dreaming of being a well-paid, famous international TV star. She even began telling her friends that she was going to be famous on TV. In Cambodia, James handed City off to another person. This time it was a man that called himself Chang. He claimed to be Chinese, but he spoke her native language of Bahasa perfectly. Chang led her through three different airport pranks. On February 3rd, 4th, and 7th, City smeared faces at the Kuala Lumpur airport. What's even better is that she was getting paid even more. Chang increased her pay to $200 for every person she pranked. But the long con was almost up. It was almost time for her to do what she was really supposed to do. On February 8th, Chang gave her $4,000 to arrange a special trip to Macau. That's where Kim Jong-nam lived in this special administration region of China. But the next day, the plans were canceled. North Korean operatives figured out that Kim Jong-nam was actually inside Malaysia. City spent her last night as a free woman at a hard rock cafe with a bunch of her friends she had made in Kuala Lumpur. Her friends chipped in for a birthday steak for her that normally would have cost two-thirds of her usual monthly salary. After her friends sang happy birthday to her, she blew out a lone candle on a cupcake-sized cake. Then they clubbed late into the night. On the morning of February 13, 2017, the stage was set. City was sitting and having a coffee with Chang overlooking the International Airport Terminal in Kuala Lumpur. He led her to a pillar near the Air Asia self-check-in kiosk and explained the plan to her. Everything was going to be the same but a second woman would be joining her in the prank this time. City was supposed to leave the scene the minute the second woman smeared her target's face. To City, this is basically just like any other prank she had pulled. Kim Jong-nam arrived at the terminal. Chang pointed him out to City. He then asked her to turn her head away and hold out her hand. He pulled a white plastic bag from his backpack and covered her palm with a very oily substance. Except something was different this time. This time the oil substance smelled completely different. In fact, the fact that it even had a smell was different because the other times it was odorless. Chang also reminded her to make it look good and to remember to say I'm sorry. As Zhang Nam approached, Chang ducked away and City got to her target. After rubbing Zhang Nam's face, she fled to the bathrooms where she immediately washed her hands as she had been instructed. She didn't think anything was wrong or different. She decided to spend the rest of the afternoon shopping at a mall. Later that night, she was back at her usual spa waiting for the next prank. 
another prank that would never, ever come again. It's now clear to the entire world that Kim Jong-nam was assassinated in a carefully executed plot. But how did they do it? Who are the two women? The world wanted to know who were these trained North Korean agents who managed to get in the country so easily. The two women were identified easily off of security tapes. The Vietnamese woman wearing a white jumper with the big LOL logo was simple to catch. She was arrested the very next day when she returned to the same airport. Her name was Don T. Huang, and she was given the same exact storyline as City. Just like City, she also had dreams of becoming a celebrity. Well, both of their dreams sort of came true, just not in the way they imagined. At 2 in the morning, the night after her final prank, City Asia was arrested in the Flamingo Hotel in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. She had just finished with one of her clients when the police rushed in and put her in cuffs. The first four times Indonesian officials visited City after her arrest, she thought that being in jail was part of the TV show she was supposed to be on. She had no idea what really happened at the airport. The first time police visited her, she kept on asking when she could leave. The second time, she actually complained that she still hadn't been paid for the last prank. The third time, she accused the police of being part of the prank. The fourth time, when officials showed her a popular Indonesian newspaper proving what actually happened, that's when it finally hit her. The girls were clearly the people who had smeared the oily substances all over Kim Jong-nam's face. Their guilt would seem crystal clear to anyone that didn't have direct knowledge of the situation. Under separate questioning, each of them claimed that they had no idea of doing anything wrong. As they explained, they had done this a bunch of times before. And each time afterwards, their targets were safe and sound. Many weeks would pass before City would come to realize that she had been tricked into becoming a puppet for North Korea. The Japanese-looking guy who went by James was actually a North Korean named Ri Ji Yu. When City flew to Cambodia, she didn't meet Chang, but Hong Song Hak. He was a North Korean intelligence officer who learned to speak Bahasa during college and worked in the embassy in Jakarta. The other girl's experience had been virtually identical. She had been trained in the same way and was also brought to Cambodia two days earlier. She was also accompanied by a North Korean spy with many years of experience in Vietnam. And while Hong Song Hak and City were practicing in the airport, three more spies were also overseeing everything. The liquid used on Kim Jong Nam was actually VX2, an extremely potent nerve agent which acts extremely fast. It consisted of two separated components which are harmless by themselves, but when mixed together, it basically triggers muscles of anyone affected to fire continuously without ending. The muscles become tired and breathing becomes impossible. Each woman was putting one part of the nerve agent onto Kim Jong Nam's face. Once the two ingredients mixed together, that was it for him. As City sat in her cell, she was shown a picture of Hong. She realized that he was one of the men she had smeared in the Double Tree Hotel just two weeks before. It became clear to her that even the victims of all the practice pranks were spies who were in on the very carefully staged rehearsals. North Korea wanted to show the world how powerful they were and that they could get to anyone. North Korea was showing the international community they're just the butt of the world's jokes. Kim Jong-un wants to rule for a very long time. He wants to be regarded as a major player on the world stage. As for the girls? Fortunately, Indonesian judges believed them and finally released them after dropping all charges in 2019, a full two years later. Here's what's next. 